Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is I, Mark Alessi, and today I want to go ahead and introduce you a concept from quantum physics called the double hole or double slit experiment, also known as the Young Experiment. And I thought this, this experiment would be really interesting to introduce to you guys because it goes into the concept of basically showing that particles as we know it when observed on a subatomic level in a, or in a quantum physics level can really um, change the way that we think about it. So when you think of particles, you can compare it to something like a rock, or you can compare it to something like, you know, a baseball or something like a bowling ball. So usually what happens in physics is you want to understand the basic patterns that of nature and then find equation that correlates with it. And then you can find, basically find that, you know, this is kind of like a physics of truth. So what happened is... When we're dealing of the universe, a lot of times people usually think of this in physics as the classical mechanism. And when you're dealing with that, you're dealing with things that are more on a microcosmic level. So you're dealing with things like planets, you know, space and time, uh, inertia. You're dealing with things with the gravitational pull. You're dealing with things with um, things that have to do with more a macrocosm of the universe. So... In contrast to that, you also have the quantum mechanisms, and that's when you're dealing with things on a very minute or microscopic level. So what you're dealing with is you're dealing with things that has to do with the atoms, electrons, or protons, observing those things. So, you know, something that's like 10 billionths of a meter, or what you can, what you can look at as like the orbit of an electron and, and a neutron, around a nucleus. But what happens is they would, you would, the physicists thought that basically if you understand the bigger concepts, you, that it would basically correlate with the smaller concepts. But as they started to observe things on a subatomic, microscopic, quantum mechanics level, they understood that things did the universe was a little bit more stranger than they initially thought. So that's when when you study quantum mechanics, you have things like string theory, M theory, dimensions. You also have things as quantum leap. You have things as interdimensional travel and teleportation. Because it shows that quantum as, as physics as we know it is a little bit more weird and we're still kind of getting a graps, graps on it. So here I have, I'm going to introduce to you a scientist by the name of Thomas Young, and he was born on June 13th of 1773. And why I'm introducing him is because it was him that came up with a double slit experiment. So what happened was, initially when he did his experiment, his, the basic version of his experiment had to do with the coherent light source, such as a laser beam which illuminated a plate pierced by two parallel slits. However, other atomic scale entities, such as electrons, were able were found to exhibit the same behavior when fired towards a double slit. So even though he initially started out with a coherent light source, his experiment can be duplicated with electrons. So what exactly does that mean? So what happened is, let's just say we're dealing with electrons now, so we're dealing with things from a subatomic par particle level. Now, initially, they thought things from a subatomic particle level was basically a was basically like a baseball, or basically like a ball, but in a very very small way, like just like a very very small, you know, if it's a rock, it's just a very very small rock. So what happens? They said, well, what happens if we dip, hit a whole bunch of electrons through one slit? Let's just see how it looks on the other side, you know. So what happened is they did that, and when they did that, they realized that it went as expected, as they predicted there was a slit. So here I have a picture. I just have a flashlight because we're, we're dealing with electrons. I just I just put a flashlight there, but it's really flashlights of like electrons throwing at it. And you push it through the one slit, you will see that there is a green slit, which is basically where the electrons shifted. So they said, okay, well that is basically what we expected because a particle would do the same thing too. If we were to throw a whole bunch of baseball through a slit, it would either hit the part that's not you know, it would hit the wall, or if it went through the slit, it would actually hit it in the formation of the slit. So they said, well, let's 
you know, let's think about this and just say, hypothetically, what would happen if we had two slit? So based on logic and based by understanding particles, they said, well, naturally, it would hit the wall, but if it went through the wall, on the viewing screen, we would be able to see the impact hitting it in the basic same way, where two lines. So that's basically how they expected it to look like. This is another way that they expected it to look like. So here I have them throwing particles on the left side of electronics going through two slits and it's hitting the detector screen and basically understanding particles like a rock or anything else it would basically hit its imprint but when it hits it would basically form the two slits however when they did their experiment and they hit the electrons through the two slits they realized that it looked a little bit different instead of hitting two slits like they thought it would, like basically a regular particle, it looked like this where there was multiple slits, even though there was two slits there. And I think that was really interesting this is, as it went on the other side, it basically created new slits that went there that was in between the slit that was initially there. So then the question was, how is the slits on the other side forming these slits and how are they going in between the slits and why are they creating new slits that are not even there. So just to recap real quick, uh, what they initially thought is if they put their source towards two slits on the screen is this is how it would look like by the hypothe hypothesis would be predicted. But what the young experiment showed is when they hit the electrons be between the two slits, it actually created fringes that look like this, or what you can say looks like barcodes. So here's another example. So the question is, how did it go into two slits, into like, let's just say one, two, three, four, five, five, or different variations of slits? That was the question. Because if it was a particle, um, based, I, based as what classical mechanism says, like a rock, it shouldn't have done that. So what happened was they decided um, it, sh it, sh it shouldn't do that. But what ha so what happened is they decided to go ahead and observe this mechanism because they said, well, since we're not sure how this is happening, we need to understand it as as it leaves. We got to understand this this particle. So as they observed this concept and tried to understand why is it separating. The particles, ironically, went right back to acting like it usually did before, where it never even created those multiple slits. It just created the two particles like they initially expected it. So they said, okay, that's weird. So they watched it again, and it did the same thing again. So then when they didn't watch it, it went back to the five slits. So they came to the realization that under the observation of the particle, it changes. It changes the way it, it, it reacts or the way it, um, basically the observation changes it. So therefore, when they were observing it or when they were measuring it, it would act like a particle as expected. However, when it was just being observed through the concept of it going through the experiment and just watching the imprints, they realized that those five lines of friction would hit the wall. So then they had to come to observation, why is it when we observe it, it changes, and why does it go back into regular way? And if it goes, and, and if it goes from five, how does it do that? How does it go to five slits as opposed to two? So the first thing, you know, obviously they realized that observing changed it, but then they didn't understand how come there was the, ch this, the slits were changing. And that's when they came to the concept of waves. And if you understand a wave, this it, it kind of the easiest analogy is understanding a wave in correlation to water. So if we were to drop an electron into the water, you will see that it will create a ripple effect going outwards. So here's a drop and here are a couple of ripple effects. One wave going out from the source in the middle. 
So they said, it seems like it's apparently the only way that they can come to this calculation of why there is multiple lines as opposed to just two lines is from the source, see on the top, when the light goes through one beam and then it creates one whole wave of ripple effects, then it hits to two slits, and then as it goes between the two slits, it creates additional ripple effects, and as the ripple effects cross each other, they either neutralize or they empower the wave to get stronger and based on those waves of interference they basically impact those lines so if we look at this here we can see that there's one wave and then it goes into two waves and then there's a wave pattern of interference because the two waves are intercrossing and where they cross and there's like the big loops you can see that that's where the bigger waves are going to be and that's where it's going to impact the wall the hardest. So understand that they said okay well we understand that these lines now are coming from the friction of the wave hitting it the hardest based on the particle or the electrons but this will basically indicate that the particle is actually more like a wave as opposed to being a particle because if it was a particle it would just go directly either hit a wall or go between the slits and hit the wall but when we're not observing it it's more like a wave hitting two slits making an interference pattern creating additional waves and hitting it based on those waves so in essence particles when non-observed are actually acting as waves so to illustrate that a little bit more, I have here some waves. You have some rocks, you have a wave. And as you can see, the ripples are creating interference patterns. Um, that illustrates why when you have a light source or when you have an electron or a path of, si of single photon going through the slit, it creates double, double uh, lines because it's actually acting as a wave as opposed to acting as a particle. Here's another picture of the waves creating the lines. And so as you see, this came to the realization that an electron, or what you can correlate as a, as a light particle or a photon source, can actually act as a particle if being observed, but if it doesn't observe, it actually acts a, as a wave. And what they would correlate this wave would be is more like a wave of probability. So what does this mean? And how does this, um, how, how, why is this a problem? So this, this created a dilemma because they weren't sure to call this a particle or a wave source because rocks do not change into wave frequencies when you're not looking at them and then you observe it they turn into rocks I mean basically when they thought it was particles they thought that it would act like that but however they realize on a quantum mechanic perception based on this that a particle or electron and it goes into an atom as well can actually ch can act as a wave but when observed it acts like a particle so this, so they know what to sure to call a particle. So this dilemma is called the measurement problem or the quantum enigma because the nature of the electron changes when being observed or measured. The process of observation collapses electrons from rayed interference patterns into single part, single particle movement based on the observation of the subject. So really what that first, that first part is saying is that a particle is more like a wave. And what happens is it's, it's, that's kind of like it's, it's made more like a wave interference pattern. And those wave interference patterns are basically the probability of where it could all sit. So what happens is we're not observing it. The particle just sits as a wave particle, but then when we observe it, it just it collapses the wave particle and then it creates where it's going to go based on the observation or the measurement. So here's, a, here's another part. If electrons or protons change based on observation, thus they are more fluid like a wave based on probability. So basically 
particles are popping into existence based on observation. So then this is where a lot of people start to question, do we live in a holographic universe where everything is a wave of probability which is crystallized into particles by consciousness? Because if this is happening with electrons, this is happening with photons, and this is also happening uh, with atoms, obviously this then, you know, there has been some debate on the subject, I will admit that, but people say, could that mean that a lot of the practical, the particles that we see are wave particles, but our consciousness and the observation of them basically determines it becoming a particle? And if that's the case, that means all everything of matter can be associated with being a wave particle. But it's really hard to observe that because once you observe it, it turns back into a particle, and that's why we can't really understand it. And understanding that is, you know, a lot of times when we think of things associated with matter, we associate something that's being very hard or very dense. But when you're dealing with things on a subatomic level, like if you're looking at an atom and you're looking at the space between a nucleus and an electron, you would notice that there is a big distance of space between that. Um, so there's more space in an atom or more space in what we know as dense reality and then there is physical reality. So in reality, when you look at the physical world, it's actually more space than there is actually material. But even when we think we understand particles, we're starting to understand that when we're not observing them based on this study, is they kind of act like wave particles, and those wave particles collapse once, observe, once we have observed them or we have measured them. So that's where people come in with the concept of we live in a holographic technology based on wave patterns. And also this comes to the concept of wave functions. So wave function in quantum mechanics um, are variable quantities that mathematically describe the wave characteristics of the particles. The value of the wave function is a part of a particle at a given point of space and time is relative to the likelihood of the practical particle being there at the time. So in physics, they have this thing called the wave function, and it's basically nothing really of that you can really measure or you can say it's physical. It's basically when you have something that is a particle but has a wave function, and what happens is based on the consciousness or measurement, you can collapse the wave function into a single experiment, ex a physical expression of a particle. So when they were able to use this calculation, it made things a lot easier for them to understand as opposed to not using it. So here is basically a probability wave of electrons. So when we think of, when we think, the, this experiment said that when we think of electrons, we also think of it as particles, but at the same time we had to start looking at it as probability wave. So here is, um, I put here the wave function collapse. Um, so you can do a little bit of research on that. So here it says the double slit experiment. The double slit experiment, sometimes called the Young experiment, is a demonstration of matter and energy can display characteristics of both classically defined waves and part particles and demonstrate the fundamental probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics phenomena. So basically it goes in more into it about the two parallel slits, um, the, the lights passing through the slits, um, observed on the screen and you can go ahead if you want to go ahead and research it more you can go ahead and look in, into that so basically that's that's the video I hope I uh, thought you guys will find it a little bit more thought-provoking where when we're dealing with particles um, you know it can it also can go into the concept of quantum entanglement which is gets a little bit more crazier with um, quantum quantum leap bit. I'll probably save that for another video. But when you realize in that, you realize that, you know, a lot of times when you hear about the universe is rhythm or the universe is mentalism, such as a Kabbalion always references this, or that, you know, it can go also into thought forms where things can um, come into experience based on concentration or when a, lot of, a lot of times people say thoughts create reality it really makes you look at things from a different perspective so that's my quick video hope you like it and I'll see you in my next